Hey everyone, welcome to our final story time. We are going to finish Little Pilgrim's Progress and then have uh, a final devotion from Indescribable. So snuggle down, get cosy, ready to find out what happens in the final few chapters. And we're on chapter 87, it's called Another Pilgrim. It was now so dark that the pilgrims could scarcely find their way, so they begged Great Heart to light his lantern. With this to guide and cheer them, they travelled more comfortably, but the girls and the two little boys were grown very tired, and they began to pray to the king to help them in their weariness. Presently, a cool, fresh breeze sprang up, and as it blew across the plains, the air became clearer and although the moon was still hidden by the clouds, the children could see each other as they walked along. Have we nearly crossed the plain? asked Christiana. Not yet, replied Greatheart, but this is your last night of trouble. Tomorrow we shall reach the, reach the land of delight, and you'll be able to rest there without fear or danger. When shall we go into the celestial city? asked James. I do not know, answered Greatheart. The king may send for you very soon, or he may give you work to do for him in the land of delight, or he may perhaps send you some send you to help other pilgrims on their journey. To be guides and fight giants, as you have done for us, asked Joseph eagerly. Perhaps when you are older, said Greatheart, smiling, but I cannot tell you what the king may think is best for you. I only know that you will be happy and that whatever he desires you to do for him, you will love to do it. Before the sun rose, while the light was still dim, the pilgrims heard the so a sound as if someone was speaking not very far from them. They went on quietly, and soon they saw a lad upon his knees by the wayside, with his face turned towards the sky. They knew that he was praying to the king, and as he did not seem to hear their footsteps, they walked slowly, so that they might not disturb him by passing. In a few moments he got up and began to run towards the celestial city, but Great Heart, seeing that he was a pilgrim, called to him to wait for them. Ah, said old Mr Honest when the lad turned round, I know him. Do you? asked Valiant. Who is he? He comes from my own city, replied Honest. His name is Steadfast, oh, Standfast, sorry, Standfast, and he is one of the king's true pilgrims. Standfast exclaimed also when he caught sight of the old man. What, Father Honest? he cried. Are you a pilgrim too? Yes, indeed, replied Honest. It does me good to see you, said he, grasping his hand. And it did me good to see you, returned Honest, seeking the help of your king like a faithful servant. Have you been in danger? asked Valiant. Or were you thanking the king for his mercies? I was in danger, answered Standfast, and then he, ch then he told his new friends what had happened to him. You remember how the flatterer met Christian and Hopeful upon the enchanted ground and tried to lead them astray? The wicked prince knew that when the pilgrims reached the land of delight, he would no longer be able to trouble them, so he employed the very many of his people in tempting the king's servants while they were still upon that plain. Standfast had been met by a girl whose name was Folly. She was very pretty and had a pleasant way of talking. You look very tired, she said to him, and I'm sure you must be lonely. Let me walk with you and be your friend. But Standfast knew by her gay dress and careless manner that she was not a pilgrim, and he would have, he would have nothing to say to her. He walked on silently and she walked beside him smiling and saying pleasant things, until at last he grew angry and told her not to trouble him. When she heard his angry words, she laughed and bade him follow her. I will teach you how to be really happy, she said, if you will promise to do what I tell you. But Standfast would not listen to her. And when he found that she was determined not to leave him, he knelt down upon the road and prayed for the king to deliver him from her temptations. I felt sure the king would help me, said Standfast, and he did so by letting you overtake me just at the right moment. I did not hear your steps, but the girl must have seen you, for she suddenly turned and went away. Then I thanked the king for his goodness, and I was going to hurry on my way when I heard you call to me. 
I believe I've seen that girl, said Mr Honest, or perhaps I've read of her in one of the King's books. You may have done both, said Standfast. She told me her name was Folly. Ah, replied Honest, she's tall, is she not, and her eyes and hair are dark. Yes, said Standfast. She smiles when she speaks, and she has a purse full of gold fastened to her belt. She's always turning over the money with her fingers, and she loves to touch it. Yes, she is just like that. I thought I knew something of her. She's a very dangerous enemy. Indeed she is, said Great Heart. Although she is so young, she does more mischief upon the enchanted ground than any of the other wicked prince's servants. She spends most of her time here, but she is sometimes met with upon a met with upon the plain near the wicked gate where she calls herself pleasure and tries to hinder children who are looking for the way of the king i could tell you many stories of pilgrims who've been deceived by her i saw that she was not good company said standfast but i did not know that i was in such danger bad companions are always dangerous replied great heart you did well to pray to the king for you would have found it difficult to escape from her the sun had now risen and the pilgrims drew near to the borders of the plain. They saw before them in the soft light the beautiful hills that lay above the dark river. The river itself was not in sight and they could not see yet see the glory of the celestial city but they knew that the golden gates were not very far and that when they entered the land of delight all the trouble and danger of, being a, of their pilgrimage would be over. I'm glad I came with you, whispered Mercy, and she slipped her hand into Christiana's. I've often been very frightened, but now I'm quite happy. Yes, said Christiana, we could never have been so happy in our old home. Then she looked around at her, bed, at her brothers. Matthew had grown taller since his illness, and his face was more thoughtful, but the change in him pleased his sister. I think Matthew will be a little like Great Heart in a year or two, don't you, she said. Perhaps the king will give him the same work to do, suggested Mercy, to guide the pilgrims. And that is the best work of all, if he could ever be wise enough. Do you think Great Heart was wise at first? He must have been taught or he would not know so much about the king and his will. And Matthew is so kind and gentle, he would be a good guide. Perhaps he would, said Christiana. He's very brave now that he really loves the king. The little boys were tired after travelling all night, but the journey had done them good and their sturdy figures were, were a pleasant sight. Then Christiana thought of innocence in the Valley of Peace and wondered how long it would be before the little one came to live with her in the sunny land of delight. All the pilgrims were quiet and thoughtful as they left the plain and followed Great Heart along the sheltered pathway of this beautiful country. Feeble Mind clung closer than ever to the arm of his kind guide, for he was still timid at the sight of the strange faces, and when the people of the land saw the pilgrims, they came out to welcome them. Mr. Despondency had found a good friend in Valiant, and much afraid, through, though she seldom left her father's side, generally had one of the older girls for her companion. Christiana and Mercy were never far apart, and the two little boys looked upon good-natured Old Honest as their special friend. So they took the last steps of their journey together and presently found themselves in one of the king's vineyards where Great Heart desired them to rest. We were so few when we started, said Mercy, as she nestled down upon the soft grass with her hand clasped in Christiana's, and now we're quite large company some young some old some weak and some strong and yet the king cares for us all the pilgrims were very happy in the land of delight the king's servants provided homes for them all and told them what work they must do mr despondency and feeble mind had only to rest quietly until the king sent for them but the younger ones each had their own duties to perform Christiana spent much of her time in teaching James and Joseph, and she often went with the others of the king's servants to welcome the new pilgrims who came into the country nearly every day. Sometimes they stole quietly away with Mercy to walk by the side of the dark river. The sight of the troubled waters made Mercy tremble, but Christiana always looked beyond them at the beautiful golden light, 
and at last Mercy began to lose her fear, and she tried to feel as Christiana did, that the coming of the king's... Excuse me. The coming of the king's messenger would be the beginning of a greater happiness than any she had yet known. If only the water were less dark and rough, she used to say, or if I could go with you to cross with me, could have you to cross with me. But if I go alone, it would be dreadful. You should not think of the water at all, Christiana always answered. You should think of the glorious city and the king who lives there, and our dear prince, and of the shining ones who will receive you. Oh, Mercy, you need not be afraid. But although her, fe her fear grew less, Mercy never liked to watch the river. She loved best to wander in the king's gardens and talk to the children who spent so many hours among the vines and children. <laughs> vines and flowers. One duty that the king desired even of the tiniest children to perform was the gathering of flowers every day for the older pilgrims, especially for those who were very old and weak and not able to walk in the garden and enjoy the beauty and perfume of the growing blossoms. After a time when Innocence came to live once more with her sister, Mercy's chief pleasure was to help the little girl in choosing her flowers and carrying them to her friends. Old Mr Honest often made, met them in the garden in the early morning and he used to say, We old pilgrims are very happy, for the little pilgrims strew our way with flowers. In one of the houses a book was kept, kept in which the king's servants had written the names of many pilgrims who had crossed the river and the stories of their lives. Matthew and Standfast studied this book very carefully and hoped that the king would some day allow them to fight for him as bravely as the soldiers of whom they read. The lame boy, ready to halt, loved the book too, but his favourite stories were those of pilgrims who had been weak and feeble, like himself. There are so many, he said one day, I think it's very comforting to read about them. And even Mr Despondency seemed more cheerful when Ready to Halt came to see him and told him of the King's love for the pilgrims and how the Shining Ones made their special care. When Great Heart had brought Christiana and her companion safely to their journey's end, he returned to his master's house, but he promised that he would some day visit them again, for most of his time was spent in guiding pilgrims along the way of the King. At last the day came for little innocence to leave the Valley of Peace, so her kind nurses sent for Great Heart and desired him to take the child safely to her sister. Innocence had learned to love her nurses, but she'd not forgotten either Christiana or the young guide. She went with Great Heart quite contentedly, and it, was, it would be difficult to say which of the two received the warmer welcome when they reach, reached Christiana's new home. Great Heart himself was very pleased to see the children again, and he told them that his master had given him permission to stay with them in the Land of Delight for a few weeks, so that he might rest in the King's gardens and prepare himself for the work. When these weeks of rest were over, it pleased the King to give him some work to do in the Land of Delight, and before this was finished, Christiana and several of the older pilgrims crossed the Dark River and entered the Celestial City. Christiana and Mercy had often wa watched the king's me messengers and the girls passed through the, uh, and the girls passed through the streets and wondered at whose house they would knock when at last a shining one was seen standing at their own door the girls trembled with fear and joy but the messenger was not for mercy the shining one spoke to Christiana our king calls for you he said he wishes you to come to his play palace Christiana felt glad to think of being with the king in his glorious city, but she was sorry to leave her brothers and little Innocence and all her kind friends. However, she knew it would not be very long before they followed her, and when she remembered this, it comforted her. She thought she would like to bid Great Heart goodbye, so she sent for him and told him what the Shining One had said. He stayed with her a little while, talking about the river and the way of crossing it. When the other pilgrims heard that Christiana was going away, they came to see her also. She asked Valiant to be a friend to her brothers, and he promised that he would watch over them as long as he remained in that country. Then she bade them all goodbye, and they, but they would not let her go away alone. They came with her to the water's edge and watched her until she was out of sight. 
They could see the shining ones waiting on the other side and they knew when Christiana had safely reached the shore for the bright company moved slowly away from the river up the steep pathway to the golden gates and disappeared at last in the, in the glory of the celestial city. Poor little innocents cried when her sister left her and so did James and Joseph but Matthew and Mercy took them home and comforted them. Great heart and valiant could not be sad, although they both Christi loved Christiana dearly. They knew she had entered the celestial city and that she would never be weary or anxious any more. So instead of weeping, they praised the king who had taken his faithful pilgrim to dwell with him forever. It was not long after the departure of Christiana that a message was brought to the lame boy, ready to halt. Valiant and Great Heart were both with him when the Shining One came, and when he received the King's summons, he turned to Valiant, saying, You must keep my crutches until you find another lame pilgrim, and then give them to him with my good wishes, and tell him that I hope he will be able to reserve the King better than I have done. Then he looked at Great Heart and said, You have been very kind to me, and you have helped me wonderfully in my pilgrimage. His two friends went with him to the brink of the water and when he stepped into the water he laid his crutches down upon the bank. I shall never need them again, he said. I know that in the king's city there are horses and chariots that shine like the sun. A few days later Feeble Mind was sent for. The king's message to him was very kind and gentle and the poor weak pilgrim rejoiced to think that he would soon be in a land where toil and trouble are unknown. Some weeks passed before the Shining Ones came again and their next message was for Mr Despondency. When Much Afraid heard it she begged to go with him and the king who knew how dearly she loved her father and how faithful she had been to him through all the dangers and difficulties of their pilgrimage granted her request. So the father and daughter entered the dark river hand in hand and the pilgrims upon the shore could hear Much Afraid singing a song of praise as she went through the water, although she was too far away for them to distinguish its words. Old Mr Honest received the next summons and just at the time the river was so full of water that it overflowed its banks. But although it was terribly wide and deep, the good old man was not afraid. He knew that the king would not allow him to perish in the dark waters. He went cheerfully down to the shore at the appointed time, and there he found a friend waiting for him, a man whom he'd known nearly all his life, whose name was Good Conscience. He had once said to him, I shall hope to have your help when I cross the dark river, and C Good Conscience had remembered this and had obtained the king's leave to help his friends in the last hour of trouble. So he gave him his hand, and although the waters raged wildly around them, Honest laid, leaned upon his strong shoulders and crossed the water, the river, in safety. The same messenger who called Mr Honest summoned Valiant also, but he went over the river late in the day. He had no fear of crossing, for he had always been brave, and his heart was full of trust in the good king. He was longing to see his wife and his dear little son once more and he knew how happy Christian and his mother would be when they heard who was waiting to receive their welcome. Mine has been a hard pilgrimage, he said, and I've had to fight my way through many troubles and dangers. But I'm, no I'm going now to my true home in the celestial city where I shall be safe and happy forever. The good soldier had no longer any use for his sword, so he left the bright weapon in the great, in great heart's care and desired him to give it to some other pilgrim. Then he entered the river and his friend soon lost sight of him, but presently the sound of the silver trumpets were upon the other shore and they knew that Valiant was on his way to the gates of the city. I can only tell you of the departure of one more pilgrim. Standfast hoped that he might be allowed to spend a long life in working for the king, but this was not his master's will. The king had need of his faithful young servant in the celestial city, and very soon he was summoned to cross the river. At first, Standfast could scarcely believe that the king really wished to receive him into his own palace, but the Shining One assured him that it was true. 
You have served my master very faithfully, said he, and he's not willing that you should be living at a distance from him any longer. So Standfast prepared for his last journey and gave Greatheart many messengers, messengers, messages, <laughs> messages <laughs> even, oh dear, for he hoped that the guide would perhaps some day meet with others of his family who might be following in his steps. The floods had gone down before this time and the water was very still and calm. When Standfast reached the middle of the river, he turned and spoke once more to his friends. This river makes me so makes so many people afraid, he said. Indeed, I was frightened myself before I entered it, but my fear is gone. I, sh I, sh I can feel the firm ground under my feet and very soon I shall be with the prince. It's been very pleasant to hear of him and think of him, but now I shall see him with my own eyes. He's helped me and strengthened me all through my pilgrimage, and he is with me now. Then the other pilgrim saw that, and as he turned again towards the city, a beautiful light fell upon his face. Then in the clear air they could see quite across the river, and were able to watch a multitude of shining ones who came down to receive the faithful lad and lead him into the presence of the king. The end. That is it. We have reached the end of Pilgrim's Progress. So let us do our final devotion and it's called The Pale Blue Dot. Christ gave up his place with God and made himself nothing. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God. He obeyed even when that caused his death, death on a cross. And that's Phil Philippians 2, verses 7 to 8. In 1977, NASA launched the Voyager 1 spacecraft into space with a mission to photograph our neighbouring planets. Thirteen years later, after racing past Pluto, the farthest point in our solar system, at a speed of 40,000 miles per hour, Voyager 1 turned back to Earth to snap a picture. That image became new, known as the pale blue dot. Taken from four billion miles away, the picture shook the scientific world. Why? Because it was the first time we got a glimpse of just ho how small our Earth really is in the expanse of the universe. And that makes what Jesus did even more incredible. Jesus was equal with God, but he gave up his place in heaven and became one of us. He was born to Mary, a peasant woman, and her carpenter husband. His bed was a dusty manger in the town of Bethlehem. He grew up and lived and loved and healed and taught on this tiny pale blue dot. And then, obeying God, he willingly went on to die on a cross so every single person on this tiny blue dot could be forgiven when they call on him. Yes, we are indescribably small. Some like to say we don't even really matter. But when we look at Jesus, the one who gave up heaven to come down to this pale blue dot, we know the truth. We matter very much to God. He gave his own son so that we could know him. Be amazed. Scientists combined 60 different pictures together to make the one image called the pale blue dot. Each picture was made up of 640,000 pixels. Voyager 1 was so far away from the Earth that it looked, took five and a half hours for each pixel to travel through space to Earth. Not each picture but each tiny pixel dot in the picture. It took months for the full images to make their way to, to us. Now that is a slow download. Thank you God for sending Jesus to save me so I can know you and help me remember that even though I am small, you can use me to do great things for you. Well, that's kind of appropriate given uh, what the pilgrims were doing while they were waiting to cross the dark river, that they were working, they were doing God's work. So, um, yeah, we are teeny tiny, but we're not too tiny to do God's work. So let's do our final prayer together. 
for this uh, series of story time. So join me please in praying. Dear God, we thank you for each story, each chapter that has been shared over the YouTube channel. Lord, I just thank you that uh, we have had this technology that's allowed us to share this time together. We thank you for the books that we've read. We thank you for the prayers that have been said. And we thank you for the prayers that have been answered to. God, we do thank you for our amazing planet. Please help us to look after our planet, to uh, be respectful, um, to be sensible, to be safe. Lord, and we just pray for wisdom um, as we wait for our time to be called to the celestial city. Help us to do work for you that will tell people all about you that we might share the good news of Jesus Christ with others. Amen. Well, please don't forget there's Junior Church and uh, there's other stuff going to be on the YouTube channel. So keep checking in and checking what's available. And of course, you can go back to the beginning and listen to the stories again if you want. Um, but this is not the end. We will still continue to do something together. So please do join me. Uh, the next thing will be Sunday for Junior Church. Please do t tune in and find out what we're learning about. So until then, take care, stay safe and look after yourselves. Enjoy everyone. Bye bye.